next question we have from Harper. Token management strategies for chatbot scenarios. How to divvy up the prompt token capacity between a transcript, meta prompts, examples, partner, data context, and the model response. Also strategies for managing the transcript length as it grows. I think this is a great question for the co-pilot chat team because this is exactly what you all are encountering. So anyone from there would like to hop in to at least give some thoughts on token management strategies. Or even just talk about what's been implemented in Copilot chat. And if folks from Copilot chat don't want to chat, like talk, I know this is something that I've been seeing from internal first party uh, customers as well. And while we don't have any explicit plans around this, things that have been requested are the ability to do token aware templating so that you can create a template and then understand or set limits on how many tokens different portions of that template will take. Um, there's also been requests around understanding token usage. <laughs> so understanding how many tokens have been used so far, allowing you access to that so that you could then proactively take measures to throttle your token usage because Generally, what we found is that it's a lot better for you to throttle usage before you get throttled by the model um, or the service, because at that point, you're going to hit some hard limit that you have no options to do otherwise and wait. Um, whereas if you do some throttling, you may, may be able to do it in a smarter way that uh, less impacts your user experience. So there are 100%. This is a topic that we've heard from folks internally as well. Um, and I would expect to see some some progress here over the next couple months. Um, I'll be posting some features in GitHub shortly, um, and then we can track progress there. But in the meantime, um, some folks from the Copilot chat might want to weigh in. And at at a high level, I can give what I believe was happening at some point in Copilot chat, which may be slightly different to what we're doing today. Um, but basically you have a chat. Um, I'm going to have a you know conversation. I'll type in something, the bot responds, we go back and forth. Sometimes I'll say things like, okay, or I'll say yes, or I'll say no, like very brief responses, which are not very high value in terms of their individual um, position in the in the sequence. What we had been doing, and I don't know if we're still doing this, but we were doing summarization of the last N messages in a chat to get the summary of what had been talked about, which is um, intended to be smaller than each of the you know last N messages in a sequence. So one one strategy is to summarize what's happened in the conversation, ensure the summary is smaller than the sum of those um, chat messages that were sent. And then the most um, basic implementation is a sliding window. So let's say you have an ongoing conversation for, you know, I don't know, 10 weeks, and you say, okay, I'm only going to keep a history of the last four weeks of conversation. So you have this sliding window that, you know, keeps moving as time goes on. So slice up different portions of the, um, the message. And awesome, Tao's put in some awesome stuff. Okay, so token limits, we have weight, we have cool stuff. Okay, this is different to back when I was looking at it. It's changing very rapidly, I would say as well. Copilot Chat has a pretty good sized team working on it, and there's been a lot of improvements that have come in. Cool. Tao, do you want to add anything or? comment on, it, on what we're seeing here yeah i, I can i can um, briefly speak to this uh but it's a really complicated topic um so i recommend uh, people to uh uh dive deep in uh really read the code uh but it's hard for me to describe it in language <laughs> um so so how the copilot chat works is it it w w when you send a message to the bot it will go ahead and do different things to um, to kind of analyze your 
intent and then to extract the chat history that is saved in 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 one of the data stores and then it will try to grab cognitive memories from embedding um, from memory database and um, and and possibly if it decides to invoke one of the planners then it will try to grab information from the um, execution results of the planner so it combines everything into the fine into into the thing that we call the final prompt right but uh, we kind of limit how each section of the final prompt like we kind of have a token limit for each section of the final prompt so as you can see here for the memories kind of fits like 30 percent of the like the token limits we set for the um so so the token limits for the prompt is completion token limit minus the response token limit. so that's called a context token limit so the memories takes up 30 percent of the context token limit and so if you have like a hundred entries of relevant memories we kind of just grab the top kind of um maybe 30 that has the highest score relevancy score and then and then and then put that into the final prompt and then we discard the rest and kind of like the same thing for the document context um, and the same thing for the external information context i don't know if that makes sense hopefully this makes sense. oh that's good yeah thank you for the walkthrough and again this is one version one implementation that uh, our team has uh, at least seemed to work well for us, but we certainly invite you all to, uh, you know, to offer your own implementations or even just um, share your strategies for how to handle this. Because yes, as as Steve mentions, this is a challenging topic. <laughs>